Dangerous Assignment. Transcribed starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize that this assignment's going to prove that sometimes what goes up never comes down. Morning, Commissioner. You sent for me? Steve, I've got a ghost for you to go after. Gentleman or a lady? She's no lady. She's a tramp. What? Freighter, that is. Oh, ghost ship, huh? Shades of the Flying Dutchman. We believe this ship has been running supplies and war materials to the guerrilla forces in the Philippines, Steve. From some port in the South China or the Sulu Sea. But we've never been able to catch up to her, huh? She's been spotted time and time again. We think we have her trapped and then she vanishes completely. Any leads at all as to where she picks up her supplies? One, Steve. Yesterday, North Borneo authorities discovered a large storehouse along an isolated section of the coast north of Sandican. Could be the base of operations for our lady ghost. Could be. Get over there, Steve. Check with the constabulary at Sandican and track down this ghost ship. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. The National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. All Hollywood will be on hand for the Academy Awards Thursday, March 19th. And you can hear a complete description of this gala presentation of the fabulous Filmland Oscar when you set your radio dial to NBC. Yes, NBC invites you to share the glamour, glitter, and swank of Academy Award night during a 90-minute broadcast of this fabulous event. Paul Douglas will do the radio commentary, and Bob Hope will be on hand to keep the proceedings running smoothly. Yes, it's Hollywood's most important night of the year, Academy Award night. So be sure to hear every star-spangled moment on Thursday, March 19th, on the NBC Radio Network. Sure, I've got my assignment. Get over to North Borneo and get on the trail of a ghost ship which has been running supplies to guerrilla forces in the Philippines. It's early Tuesday evening when my plane sets down at Sandican, capital of the British Crown Colony. A representative of the local law is there to greet me, and he starts hustling me to a waiting car. Name's Jeffries. I'd appreciate it if you made it just plain Fred. All right, just plain Fred. You can make it just plain Steve. And what's the hurry? We're expecting our ghostly friend sometime tonight. Oh, the ship? Where? At the spot where you located the storehouse? Right. What makes you think she'll show tonight? Well, a patrol boat picked up a fisherman off Batu Island. His boat was shot out of the water by the ghost last night. What? Yeah, six men aboard. Skipper, the only survivor. Man named Dubeck. Patrol boat wasn't far away when it happened. Heard the explosion when the shell hit. They picked up Ubeck, swept the area thoroughly, and no sign of the ghost ship. Where'd you say this happened? Off Batu Island. Oh, quite a way up the coast. And the ghost is probably headed this way to pick up that stuff at the storehouse, huh? Oh, it's a distinct possibility. All things considered, she'll be due at the spot in another hour or so. Here we are, Steve. After you. Thanks. <laughs> Any particular reason why the ghost would want to sink the fishing boat? Oh, might have mistaken her for the patrol boat. There was quite a fog, you know. Was the uh, fisher equipped with a radio? Right. But many of them are equipped with radio. That's the reason, I think. The ghost rammed three other fishers in the past month. Yeah. She probably likes privacy, doesn't want anyone around to report her position. Do we have any description of her? Other than that she's a freighter? None. But before the night's over, we might know a lot more about our friend the ghost. I hope. far later, we pull up at a spot along the coast. There's a bright moon overhead, but it's not much help since a low, heavy fog clings to the area. 
Jeffries and I make our way through the trees and step out onto the beach. Over here is the road leading from the dock. It goes back into the jungle to the storehouse. It used to be an old ammunition dump. Like to have a look? Yeah. Never did like that sound. Nine times out of ten, the bird turned out to be a Japanese soldier. Well, this time, it happened to be one of my own men. Got him scattered all over the area. Another one of my chaps, Joe Tiber. Never could do that call properly. Sounds good enough to me. Oh, wait till you hear Sam Keone. He's the top man in the bird call department. Does tend to be a little flashy at times. Overconfidence, you know. Here we are. Down this way. Climb the steps. I'll turn on my torch. Hey, quite a layout. All steel and concrete. Stops over there in the crates. Guns and ammo on this side, and over here, various kinds of machinery. Auto, parts, chemicals, fuel, so on. Yeah, so I see. If you're looking for a trademark or serial number on that stuff, don't bother. It's been filed off. Yeah, I can see that, too. Still, still there must be something we... Hold on, Steve. Hmm? What? Listen. What is it? It's a signal from my chaps. They've spotted something. Come on. This way, Steve. Down to the beach. You saw it. Here. What is it, Keone? Over that way, sir. That way, past the dock. It was there a moment ago, sir. A ship? The fog seemed to leave. Yes, sir. It looked like a ship. I don't see anything now. Are you sure you... Hold on, Steve. Listen. You hear anything? No. Ah, I guess just my imagination. What you saw out there, Keone, it might have been just another bank of fog moving in. In this light, your eyes are bound to play crazy tricks. The possible, son. Well, might as well make ourselves comfortable, Steve. Sit down. Got the night ahead of us. Two pots of coffee and half a pack of cigarettes later, the sun is high overhead and the fog is completely gone. There's no sign of the ship. Just to play it safe, Jeffries leaves his men on the scene and the two of us head back to Sandy Can. We spend the rest of the day nosing around the waterfront. We pick up a lot of talk about the ghost, nothing more. Early that evening, before heading up the coast again, we decide to stop in at the local hospital to have a chat with a fisherman who survived the shell fire from the ghost ship. Down this way, Steve. Doctor said he'd be... Jeffries! Leon Maros. He owns a fishing fleet, one of the largest in the area. Ah, ah, Jeffries. I've been waiting for you. I figured that. Look, I'm sorry about what happened. Of course. That's what you said the last time and the time before and the time before that. How long can this go on, I ask you? We're doing all we can, Mr. Maros. Uh, uh, This is Steve Mitchell, United States government agent. He's joined the investigation. How do you do, Mr. Mitchell? Perhaps we can get to the bottom of this soon, huh? Before I am run out of business. So far, four of my ships I have lost. Ram, shot out of the water by this... this ghost. I understand how you feel, Mr. Morris. My men have become frightened. Soon they will refuse to man my ships, and then where will I be? Have you talked with Dubeck yet? No. No, they would not let me in to see him. They... they said he was not well enough to talk. We can go in now. The doctor said it was all right. Oh, good, good. Well, here we are. You two go on in. I want to check with headquarters. To back. To back. Hmm? Huh? Oh, Monsieur Maros. Yes, yes. It's good of you to come to see me. This is Mr. Mitchell of the American government. He uh, will probably want to ask questions. Hello, to back. Monsieur Mitchell. I'll, of course, tell you all I know, what I can remember. Fine. The shelling took place just off Baku Island, right? Yes, monsieur. There was heavy fog. I was alone on deck when suddenly there was explosion as the shell hit us. I was thrown into the water. I looked back, saw our boat was on fire. Then I saw something else. The ghost ship? It, it looked so big, a monster coming out of the fog at me. Then it slipped silently, disappeared into the fog again. You got a good look at the ship, then? Close up? Close up, Monsieur Mitchell. <laughs> yes, too close. A big ship, as I said. All gray color. And, uh... Go on, Debeck. 
There was something about the ship, monsieur. Something that at a single glance seemed familiar. That I had seen it somewhere before. It is hard to explain. <laughs> Perhaps I'd be able to remember what it was when I can think more clearly. Sure, sure. You've had a rough time. Monsieur Maros. Yes, my friend. They say I will be in the hospital for some time, mm. unable to work. There is my wife, Monsieur Maro. Your wife, of course, Dubeck, of course. We do not have much money. She will worry. I understand. You must let me take care of it. I will take care of everything, huh? Thank you, Monsieur. Thank you. Steve! What is it, Jeffrey? I just got word from the Coast Patrol. Our ghost is tangled with another fishing boat. Oh, don't tell me it was one of my boats again. No, this fisher belonged to the Carver Company. The ghost tried to ram her down an hour ago off the Ballaback Strait, but she missed. The fisher managed to trail her and just radioed in a position. Good. Where is the ghost? She's gone up into the Tanya River, and there's only one way out. We've got the ghost bottled up this time, but good. <laughs> Steve Mitchell will continue his dangerous assignment in just a moment. Did you know that you helped to perform miracles? Human life itself is a miracle. Through the blood you donate and the money you give through your Red Cross, you help to preserve life. And now scientists and physicians have discovered another miracle you have a part in. Blood processed into gamma globulin for use in the prevention of paralysis in polio. To collect the blood, process it into gamma globulin for the protection of our children against the dread disease will take a lot of money. In addition, the Red Cross must continue to collect whole blood for civilian hospitals which it serves, for the Korean wounded, and for the building of a safe plasma reserve for national defense, both military and civilian. Blood gives life. Money packs and sends it. When you give through the 1953 Red Cross Fund Appeal... You're helping to give life. You're helping keeping the blood bottles filled and delivered. Give and give generously. Answer the call. Now back to Dangerous Assignment and Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. last, it looks like we're getting somewhere. The report from the Cabo Company fishing boat that she had just sighted the phantom ship is our hardest lead to date. Jeffrey Smaros and I race to the waterfront and pile aboard one of the several patrol boats lined up for the operation. We shove off. An hour later, we're nearing the spot. No sign of fog tonight, Steve. That ghost ship won't be able to lose itself so easily. I hope not, Jeffrey. Isn't that the mouth of the Tanaya River just ahead? That's right, Maros. That's where this Cabo Company fishing boat reported the ship was headed, huh? Yes. See, there's the fishing boat off our starboard over there. Yeah, blinking at us. Uh, ship still up river. Good. You say there's no other way out, Jeffrey? Not that I know of, old boy. All right, Captain, into the river. Only a question of time now, Steve. Shouldn't be much farther now, Steve. Hey, this river's longer than I thought. Yes, but around the next bend, it narrows suddenly. That's right, Maros. That's the farthest a big ship could get. In that case, she's got to be right around the bend. Huh? Our gun crews are ready for her. I approach this moment with great pleasure. Blow my fishing boats out of the water, will she? Now she'll get a taste of it herself. I wonder why she headed up this river. And possibly a hidden supply dump around here. Yeah, it could be. She sure wouldn't have done it if she'd known the fishing boat was tailing her. Steady now. We're rounding the bend. Steady. Now, searchlight's on. That's it. Sweeping back and forth across the... Hey. Steve. It's impossible. There is no ship at all. We search along both banks of the river but can't find any concealed channels and finally we head back to the mouth of the river. 
The other patrol boats have been covering the coast on each side, but can't report anything. So back to sand again, we steam with egg on our face. We're a sad-looking outfit when we get off the patrol boat. Well, another lead up in smoke, Steve. Yeah. There's a place not far from here where we can get some coffee. Okay. Join us, Morris? No. I will say good night. Jeffries, from now on until you catch that ship, I insist on adequate protection for my fishing boats. We do the best we can, Morris. Your best is apparently not good enough. My charter guarantees me safe fishing. I insist upon adequate protection. Good night. <sighs> what a headache, Steve. It isn't enough this phantom ship is supplying the gorillas. They also have to put our fishing fleets out of existence. Well, I guess they figure that's one sure way of staying on the loose if they blow every boat out of the water that spots them. Quite. Well, what now, Steve? I wonder how Dubeck's doing. The survivor from the sunken fishing boat? Yeah. When we were there earlier, he told us there was something familiar about the phantom, something he might be able to put his finger on when he got some of his strength back. Why, well, that's right. Come on, let's drop in on him. End, isn't it? Uh -huh. Hope he's been able to remember a little more. Steve. From Dubeck's room. Locked. Get back. <clears throat> Dubeck. Stabbed to death. The window. Open. Come on. We dive out the window and cover the hospital grounds, but there's no sign of the killer. He must have moved real fast. Finally... We give up and drive to Morris' house and break the news to him. Oh, no. Uh, Dubeck, dead. Now I'm ruined. What do you mean? Well, how do you expect me to keep even one crew together when this leaks out? Let alone an entire fleet. I know. Well, come on, Jeffrey. Right. Oh, uh, Morris. Yes, yes. Didn't Dubeck mention having a wife? Mrs. Dubeck. Dubeck, of course. She lives in the village of Le Mana. She has not heard the news? Not that I know of. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, I... I don't suppose you... No. No, I... I guess it is my duty to tell her. I think so, Maris. I'll drive up there right away. Oh, uh, why didn't I stay in the Mediterranean? I had it so nice there. i see you later. Uh, I doubt there's much more we can do tonight, Steve. I guess not. I'll drive you by your hotel. Fine. You seem preoccupied. Hmm? Oh, just thinking about something Marrow said. Oh? About being put out of business by all this. Well, what about it? Maybe that's the point. Well, I don't follow you. The phantom ship steams up a river. There's only one way out, but we search the river... No phantom ship. So? So there's one possibility we haven't examined yet. Namely, maybe the ship never steamed up that river. But the fishing boat reported... Exactly. That... And that fishing boat is owned by the Kaba Company. Oh, you think they deliberately sent in a false report? Could be. Maybe they wanted to draw us away from that storehouse we were watching up the coast so they could get a load of supplies from there. The Kaba Company... Look... There are two fishing fleets, Morris's mm -hmm. and the Kaba Company. Morris has lost about four boats. How many has the Kaba Company lost? Why, uh, none that I know of. Matter of fact, I think they've acquired two additional ones recently. I see. Steve, you may have hit it right on the head. If the Kaba Company is behind this business, they could be trying to kill two birds with one stone. Sure, smuggle contraband to the gorillas and put a rival fishing company, Marrow's outfit, out of business. Do they have any freighters? I don't know, but I'm certain that Morris could tell us. Let's go back and ask him. We turn back, and then, as we get near Morris's place, we see his car pull away. Probably on his way to break the news to Mrs. Dubeck. Yeah, let's pull up on him. Wait a minute. He's not taking the road to the village where she lived. No? In that case, maybe we'd better just tag along real quiet-like and see which road he is taking. Right. We douse the lights and follow Maris's car. An hour later, he turns off the main road and heads toward the coast. He parks and takes off into the jungle on foot. We tail him. Pretty soon, we spot what looks like a deserted ammunition dump from the war. It's almost grown over with vines... Maros disappears inside. We 
ease up to it. There's a light inside. Yeah, we can see through this crack in the wall. Kerosene lantern. Brother, pretty close to that ammunition. Send a message out to the hey, boats. Radio operator. Tell them to be here hey, before Maros. dawn. We, have no we can radio the patrol boats from the car and have them board. here in time to round up the whole fleet. Come on. You're not leaving. What? A guard. Keep your hands in sight. Inside. Move. Well, company. Mitchell and Jeffries. Hello, Maros. Your stooge here invited us in with his gun. So you're the big boy behind all this, huh? Pretty neat. There is no phantom ship. There never was. You made up the whole deal to cover the fact you've been using your fishing boats to run supplies to the gorillas. That is correct, Mitchell. One thing I don't get, why did you sink your own boats? Well, I had the first one scuttled because a patrol boat came close. I was afraid the cargo would be discovered. Two others weren't sunk at all. I just repainted them and put them with my other company. Oh, so you own the Kaaba company too, huh? Yes. And the boat Dubeck was on, I planted a time bomb because he wanted more money. He tried to blackmail me at the hospital. So you closed his mouth with a knife. Well, I guess that's all the answers. Stay away from that lamp. No, no, wait. Oh, you fire. Fire! The ammunition. I'm getting out of here. Take the radio man, Jeffrey. I've got an idea. Jeffrey, come on. Let's drag him out before the whole joint goes up in smoke. Flames are almost to the ammo. Dive into the ditch. Another second one, we wouldn't have been. Uh, Maros is coming out of it. Yeah. What? You missed what? the show, Maros. The, the storehouse. Yeah. Looks like you just went out of business with a bang. Our star, Brian Donlevy, will return in just a moment. Jane Wyman, Ray Milan, James Stewart, Olivia de Havilland, Janet Gaynor. These are only a few of the 20 former Academy Award winners who will be heard Thursday, March 19th, when NBC broadcasts the complete Academy Award presentation ceremonies. It's Hollywood's most important night of the year, the night when Academy Award Oscars will be presented to Hollywood's finest artists. Bob Hope will be master of ceremonies, and film star Paul Douglas will be the NBC radio commentator. When you listen to the Academy Awards broadcast via NBC, you'll hear the music nominated for the awards, the names of all of the actors, actresses, musicians, directors, and technicians who received this year's nominations. And then you'll be right there through the medium of radio when the Oscars are handed out by former winners of Academy Awards. It's a night that outglitters all other Hollywood opening nights, a night that you'll want to be a part of. Hear the Academy Awards on the NBC radio network. Thursday, March 19th. Next week, Scandinavia. I elect myself target for tonight. And that will be Steve Mitchell's dangerous assignment next week. Included in tonight's cast were Ramsey Hill, Paul Fries, Paul Duboff, and Eddie Fields. This is John Storm speaking. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell with Herb Butterfield as the commissioner, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian John Doe and is directed by Bill Carn. Be with us again next week at the same time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another transcribed Dangerous Assignment. Each weekday, hear One Man's Family on NBC.